Brexit. 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 I'm sorry, I'm just practicing, because apparently there's a right way and a wrong way to pronounce a preposterously silly word for one of the most disruptively ridiculous moves in modern political history. Post-Brexit, many British citizens are feeling regrexit, or are they just in denexit over the missed exit that they just made exit? If you haven't guessed, I'm real sick of people just tacking exit onto words. We can stop doing that now. And just so we're clear, gang, yes, I'm American. I'm gonna be talking about British politics, a subject on which I am not an expert. So if I get anything wrong or gloss over some of the finer details, I sincerely apologize. There's already been a ton of coverage on this ongoing story, and if you wanna go somewhere else for more coverage, you can. This is my take, and if you take issue with it, feel free to call me a twit, a tit, a nincompoop, or a bloomin' prat. That, and more news to come, this is The Loop. For many of you out there outside of the UK who have heard a lot about this topic but still don't know why it's such a big bad deal, Britain's referendum vote to leave the European Union has massive economic and social implications. For example, last Friday, just one day after the vote to leave the EU, stock markets around the globe plummeted. In the FTSC, the British stock market alone, $171 billion were lost in a roaring financial fire. Many people were fooled into voting for the measure by Nigel Farage, the UKIP leader who led a nationwide bus campaign that alleged that Britain sends the the EU 350 million pounds a year, and that if they left, that money could go directly into the National Health Service, a promise that he admitted was bullshit almost immediately after he got what he wanted, much like a horny teenager who says, I love you, yeah, sure, whatever, just to get you in bed. In addition, outspoken racism and nativism have been on the rise since the vote was passed. For example, in the market town of Huntington, laminated cards that read, leave the EU, no more Polish vermin, were posted all over the town's Polish community. And there have been reports of British citizens of Eastern European and descent being beaten in the streets. Facebook user Ai Shah posted video of members of the so-called English Defense League, an anti-Islamic group, gathering outside of a mosque in Birmingham, waving a flag that read, rape fugees not welcome, and chanting, Allah, Allah, who the fuck is Allah? To which I say, assholes, assholes, who the fuck? Are you? Look, it was y'all who voted to leave. Why do you expect other people to do the leaving? It's like, you buy a cake, right? Everyone tells you, hey, you don't want to buy that cake. You're overweight as it is, and people in the comments have noticed. But still, you want that cake, so you buy it anyway. Then you turn around and say, ha ha, I have a cake now. Why don't you buy a cake, you fat pieces of shit? If you're confused, that's my point. That made no sense, and it was a complete waste of all of our time. Brexiters, you bought the cake. Eat the fucking cake instead of telling other people what to do with their wallets and stomachs. I don't know who to be more upset at. Nigel Farage, nativists, or people who voted leave when they really wanted to stay. By now, you've probably seen this clip. On my vote, I didn't think it was gonna matter too much because I thought we were just gonna remain. You didn't think your vote would count? Dude, the whole point of a vote is they count them. That's all votes are for, counting. Just like nails are made for hammering and ladders are made for climbing. At the end of the day, they have a single fucking purpose. Let a vote be a vote, not an attempt to get back at daddy. That's what tattoos, motorcycles, and jazz grass are for. Meanwhile, it's chaos in British government as Prime Minister David Cameron, who, though he supported the Remain movement, encouraged putting this whole thing to a vote in the first place, bailed almost immediately after the vote. Much like a prom king who got the prom queen pregnant, but isn't going to jeopardize his full ride to Stanford. He's leaving office for good in just a few short months, and with the future of the nation in jeopardy, strong leadership is an absolute must. So who's in the running? Stunningly, not Boris Johnson, the former London mayor whose head looks like a wet melon topped with stolen doll hair. He was one of the loudest voices in the Leave movement and was widely expected to announce his intention to lead the Conservative or Tory party. However, Bobo got double-crossed in something out of a CW soap. Justice Secretary Michael Gove, another pro-Leave voice who was expected to support Johnson's candidacy, instead said he had no confidence in Johnson's leadership and instead announced that he wants to lead the party himself. Is this a power grab or is Gov just acknowledging Britain's sheer lack of options? Can't it be both? Either way, if he wants to lead the Tories, he's going to have to get through Home Secretary Theresa May, who many favored to win the contest. Dubbed by Germans the British Angela Merkel, which I'm sure makes a lot of sense to people in Germany who know more about Angela Merkel, May was against the Leave movement and pledges strong leadership, as if she'd pledge anything else if she wants to run a country. It's what you pledge. Regardless, the political situation in Britain is continuing to evolve rapidly, and though things may seem bad, it's certainly not the apocalyptic scenario many were positing that Brexit would be just one week ago. Brexit. Did I do it right? No G's. It's an X. Who wants to talk about racial profiling? Anybody? No? 
Well, that makes sense. However, we should talk quickly about how Japan's Supreme Court just announced that it's okay for the Japanese government to perform surveillance on all Japanese Muslims, mosques, and Muslim-owned businesses. Really? Yes, really. How yes, really? The most. Shit. Exactly. The practice has been ongoing since 2010, when 114 police files leaked to the public, detailing blanket surveillance of Muslims all over the country, even when there was no evidence that they were in any way connected with terrorism. Which, you know, you can't do that. But then again, I guess you can, because the Supreme Court struck down the second appeal by a coalition of Muslim citizens looking to end the Islamophobic practice, saying that it's A-OK -okay for the government to indiscriminately spy on Muslims for being Muslims, and gave the citizens a total of $880,000 for all of them to calm down and go away. That's not each. That's collectively. Imagine a peeping Tom staring into your bedroom window at all times. You say, uh, hey man, I, I, I need you to get the f out of here, um, cause this is real creepy and gross. And he drops a wad of crumpled 20s on your front stoop and says, thanks for the show, kid. Why don't you buy yourself some knife? And finally, two bird's wings preserved in amber were determined to be nearly 100 million years old this week. While the scientific community has been aware that many dinosaurs had feathers since the 1990s, some of them even earlier when they saw my uncle's sweet airbrushed man at a Rush concert in 1977, this is one of the only preserved examples of whole wings from the Cretaceous period. The wings appear to have come from Enantiorth... Enantiorn... Uh, it's on the screen. I've read a lot of complex words for this show and, and source fed it. And uh, I don't know how to. In Antiornithes. This. They're an avian dinosaur that died towards the end of the Cretaceous period, and they offer fresh insights into how these animals lived and how they connect to the birds of today. Paleontologists and biologists alike are all a flutter at the find, he said hating himself more and more with every moment for that pun that he just made because we're talking about birds and there's not a ton of jokes to be made about ancient dino birds, I guess. Hopefully we can all learn a lot from this beautifully preserved piece of our past. So now I wanna hear from you. What are your feelings on the Brexit? How do you feel about Japan surveilling all Muslims? And don't you think these new dinosaur wings are pretty cool? Let me know down in the comments below. I'm Matt Lieberman and until next time, you're in the loop. Thanks for watching. The American landscape is still defined by gun control this week, while Britain's EU referendum vote is rocking. I got